Hi, I'm Stefan Lombard with Haggerty. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee with my good friend Brad Phillips, my other good friend Matt Lewis, and we are here to settle a gentleman's bet. We want to buy three cars for $5,000 a piece, drive them all the way up to Auburn, Indiana to consign them with Auctions America for their fall Auburn sale, and see who comes out on top. See who buys the best car. Or the car that's going to do the best at auction. We do all have about 6,000 tabs open on our computer <laughs> right. of potential cars. Not just here in Nashville, but in Louisville, Kentucky, Indianapolis? Cincinnati, Indianapolis, yeah. Toledo. Basically this giant corridor from Nashville. I have also looked in Chattanooga, Huntsville, Alabama, which are the opposite direction of where we're going. But you never know. For and the right car, you should go anywhere and for it. The car needs to make it to Auburn. That's the only way this whole thing is going to work. On a trailer? No. It needs to drive. Okay. So it's like a big the, deal. Like the song from Smoking the Bandit, we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there, <laughs> and I'm going to win. I don't think that's how the song goes exactly. Okay. Well, in any case, I'll see you guys in Auburn. Sounds good. Yes. All right. So I found um, a dealership, Music City Motorsports, that seems to have a decent inventory of um, classics, as well as a lot of newer stuff. And so I'm just going to go see what they have, see if there's anything in my price range. And um, if not, maybe they can point, point me in another direction, and I'll go from there. I know car people all over the country, so I placed a few calls to some potential private sellers in the area also. There are a couple of cars that are going to be with a friend of mine that we have the option to look at and see if we want to uh, consider buying. And uh, I believe that they're going to be in our price range. So right now we're going to this location to look at the cars and it's going to be pretty interesting. All right, so I called the guy with the 78 Monte Carlo. Uh, going to take a look at it. He's right outside of Nashville, actually. The only problem is he doesn't want to be on camera, so we're going to have kind of some radio silence when I go to actually check out the car. The, uh, the Audi at the dealership was consigned, and I'm still waiting to hear back a price on that. And I think what I will do is I'll call them, and I'll, maybe I'll just make an offer. And if they say no or they can't, um, then maybe it's time to get out of town. Yeah, so that's silicone din right there, and it does have a little rust bubbling around the edges. So it looks like, you know, there's probably been a fire here at some point. Oh, uh, yeah, it could have been. A little charred there. We went and looked at the Monte Carlo. While it was a fair enough car for its age, it definitely was a used car. So tell me, uh, tell me about this. It's a 88, 828-535i. I, I got to tell you, so far just on air conditioning alone, this is looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the BMW, pretty nice, but a little daily drivery for this auction. And the Scorpion, I still love, but it had needs and not the kind of needs that we can fix on the way there. So we're going to continue uh, on our path going up into Kentucky. We've got the Mustang that we were looking at. Um, it's a Fox Body Mustang. It is modified, but it looks really nice. It very well may be a properly modified Mustang, but there are no interior shots and there are no engine shots. So that's where the question mark comes up. One of the many challenges beyond finding a car is that Matt and Brad are looking in, for the same kinds of cars in the same price range in the same places as I am. The Fox Buddy Mustang is a no-go. Uh, it looked great in the photos again. The body wasn't quite as nice. Mechanically, it seemed great, but there was a reason there were no interior shots. That interior is rough. We may just start heading north. Uh, Brad, it sounds like, is on his way north. We left town, Matt left town, Brad left town, we all went north through Louisville. I don't know if they stopped in Louisville to look at anything. Uh, there were cars there, but we went through Louisville. For some reason, I think it's a good idea 
to find a classic car in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, There's an 87 Dodge Shelby Turbo. Now, in standard form, that car is not all that interesting, but it's a turbo. It's a Shelby version of it. And of course, it's got a signed dash and all kinds of other stuff, but it is otherwise stock and unmolested. So I like it. 76 Fiat 124 Spider looks awesome in the pictures, which I know we've been fooled twice already by the pictures, but it's neither here nor there. It's a new city, it's a new hope. This guy here with the Shelby, I like it, uh, but honestly, he wanted to, he wants five for it, which is our top budget, which leaves us not one thin dime to fix the air conditioning compressor, which was making uh, the sort of noises like you'd poured gravel into it. For it to be a car that I'm going to get my money out of, it's going to take a little bit of work as well. I'd really like to go and look at a couple more cars before I jump on this one. I really like that Carmen Ghia. It's a very sharp car, despite the color change. Black is it's a good color for that car. I really feel like it could have done well at the auction. It was very clean. But unfortunately, Terry, the gentleman who we spoke with, is not the owner of the car. He's a friend of the owner of the car, and he does not have the title with him and the owner of the car is out of town for the next two weeks in Montana. But I, I've never seen one of these this nice before. This is really neat. Okay, so it's Thursday, two o'clock. Yes. And we are all three in Auburn. Indiana at Auctions America. Uh, and I believe all three of us arrived here in classic cars that we found on Craigslist. We all have vehicles. Somewhere in the greater or lesser Midwest. I feel like I've looked at a lot of the lesser Midwest <laughs> over the last few days, yeah, this, for sure. I, this was an exercise in, oh dear. <laughs> yes. It really was. Um, yes. It, there's a lot of like lies of omission I'm coming across on Craigslist. Yes. I feel good about my purchase. I think it's going to do well uh, on the auction block. I don't know about you guys. I I'm, feel very good about my purchase. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. We well, looked at a lot of different cars. Yeah. Lots of different kinds. And I mean the, all across the board from classics, stock type cars to 70s and 80s type vehicles really trying to think of what does each particular car offer the potential auction buyer. So, enough talking. <laughs> we should probably find out what we all ended up here with. I right? think, I agree. All right, you first. I'll go first, go that's on. fine. Fine. All right. all right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. Are we, are we gonna place any bets on how terrible it is? Well, and I know he didn't buy a British, an old British car, because I haven't heard him beating anything with a hammer out there to get, get a fuel pump unstuck. No, but you don't know that for sure because it's still not running. <laughs> it's still not here. Yeah. Um, did he leave it in Indianapolis? Where, oh, oh, I hear a horn. I hear a horn. It's got a working horn. That sounded European to me. It didn't sound as masculine as I was expecting. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There it is. The Merc. That is actually very nice. Look at that. Seatbelts fastened, 1973. Yeah. Are you going to hit me? Uh, as the plate says, and as you guessed, <laughs> it's a 1973 Mercedes 450 SL, um, which is a 4.5 liter V8. Uh, it's got 98,000 miles on it. Uh, MB Tex interior with not a stitch wrong. No cracks, nothing. Uh, really good paint. And I bought it in a little town in North Central Ohio from a very nice gentleman who had it for his wife and she has a newer SL and they don't need two SL Mercedes and I have uh, that problem all the time. <clears throat> and he put it so he put it on Craigslist, it was on Craigslist for about four days. Um, I mean I drove across northern Ohio this morning um, easily on the freeway 
And it's gonna be pretty plush in this thing. It is, it is a really comfortable, very comfortable driving position. Um, not sporty, but just relaxed. What you would want from this car. Mm -hmm. uh, both tops, this hard top was off the car when I looked at it, uh, but it's in great shape. And the soft top is new. Nice. Mm. So it's, I think there's a lot to like about this car. There's some, uh, a little bit of rust in this door sill, but he never drove it. In the 12 years he owned it, he never drove it in the winter. Excellent. Brad? Yep, certainly pretty. Is it your turn? It is. I got to see what you got. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is not what I was expecting out of you. It's not what I was expecting out of me I, either. It is very nice, um, but not what I was expecting out of you. No. This doesn't seem like your cup of tea, per se. It, you know, after driving here, it could very easily be my cup of yeah? tea. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think I hear him. I hear a car. I, I think hear a car. I see a reflection of a car. It is. Whoa, coming in it's, hot. I don't know if I trust that thing to turn like that. That is a shiny Corvair. That is shiny. Look at that. Look at that. Is that maroon? That's All right. It is a maroon. Out. Look at that. You, okay. sir. Okay. Look at you that. You looked apart in that thing. Look at you. It's an American classic. Let me tell you it what. It is a classic. Yeah, this car is, is really fantastic. Oh, and you've got a manual. Yeah, so it's, so it's a 63. And what's really cool about it, it's the first generation of Corvairs, okay? Uh, and it's a Monza. So the Monza's got a little bit of an uprated engine. So it's twin carb, it's 102, crazy stampeding horsepower. Uh, it's got a four speed, which actually works very nicely. And uh, it's great. It runs down the road, no problem. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. Um, it's pretty clean. So, but originally a, a red with black interior. That's the original interior for the car. Uh, original radio, um, all the little things that you can decode, uh, which I love doing, uh, yeah. figuring out, okay, how is this car really born, work really well. How's the top? Uh, top is almost new, brand new. And uh, when we, we put, put it up for the first time, uh, the window's clear, no yellowing, and we had seen photographs of the car that actually had the top up also. Awesome. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very good. It's a, it's a great car. It's been uh, well taken care of, we believe. One more car to see. Yeah. It's mine? Go get your car. It's yeah. my go? All right. I'm going to go get my car. Tell you what's fun, too. You can just, the heat just radiating I, off these things. I know. I just sitting outside. I, I leaned against this thing, and I, th I think I melted my hand. I heard a horn. I think, it, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Look at that. And now we, uh, we have a hybrid here. Look at that. European luxury. <laughs> An American um, reliability. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Is that a TC by Chrysler or by Maserati? Well, this one's by Maserati. Oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it is worth mentioning that this is 38,000 miles. Ah. This is really and it's got a real trident on it. it well, no, that's the Penta it's a trident. Penta trident. <laughs> that's yeah. literally what they call it. This car was born through a deal between Maserati and Lee Iacocca. Probably heard of him. Yeah. The Penta Trident on here. It's the only car to run it. Three years, one year color combination. They only did this color once. Has both tops. And it is a turbo. Nice. Is this the 2.2 turbo that they ran for so long? This is, a, I believe, a variant of the Dodge Daytona turbo. OK. Yep. It's got nice lines. It does have nice lines. And fully equipped. Oh yeah. So the, oh, well, you know, the first thing you, you notice, like if you look at Maserati bi-turbos and quattroportes and things of this era, it the seats look kind of like Maserati seats. Yes, they, they do. Very plush, So yeah. the interior is Italian leather. The exterior is by Maserati. The engine is by Chrysler. And the criticism is you're getting the worst of both worlds. <laughs> But it's really comfortable and it's a good driving car. Now, let's talk about the That the is a sign in. of the times. Car phone still in the car. Nice. It's I kind like of mandatory. It. Now you had made a lot of noise before we left Nashville about the TC. I did. Not this TC in particular, but you were you were and on a, that trail. Alarmingly adjacent TC, in fact, same guy. He has six of them. Really? Six TCs. He had this one listed on Craigslist first. It didn't sell. He pulled it. He lists the other one on Craigslist, which I went to look at. And he goes, 
You can do either. Take your pick. Right. Nice. He had a third one in the garage next to it. That one wasn't for sale. And that was cream. 38,000 miles, huh? 38,000 original miles. And it's even got the 100,000 mile marker. So you know, it's not a million 38 because it is a Chrysler engine. <laughs> and it runs well. It does. That's great. So we, uh, yeah. We all end up with Thank convertibles. You. We did somehow. We all ended yeah, up with convertibles. I wasn't necessarily looking for a convertible. Neither was I. Um, but I was looking for the car. I was looking for fun, really. Because the point of any of these cars, in my opinion, from the way I look at the hobby, is fun. Mm -hmm. I want to get in it and drive it and have fun, and I have more fun in a convertible. And, and these, all three of these cars are a lot of fun for the money. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think we all did well. Uh, now it's in Auctions America's hands. And yeah. so I'm excited to see you guys on sale day and see what happens. Yeah, all we can do is wait and see them cross the block. So let's get out of here. Yeah. Sounds good. Judgment Day, Auction Day, here at Auctions America, Fall Auburn in lovely Auburn, Indiana. The sun is out, the bidders are here. The cars are lined up. The cars are lined up and we're gonna find out uh, what happens. What's gonna happen, guys? And it turns out that there are a few of each of our cars headed across before. Yes. Which could either make us really nervous if they don't sell well or confident if they do so well. Those they're, they're holding out for our particular car. They yes. know it's coming later. Those are, those are here just to whet appetites. We've got the, the entree. I have the least of the problems though this morning because there's only one Corvair going before mine and it's the white one we looked at. Uh -huh. uh, it is a convertible, but it's an automatic transmission. And I think it's sort of on par with mine, with, but with the automatic, I still think I could come out ahead. So that one goes before me. So I'll be watching yeah. that. On my side, both of the other TCs crossed before mine. Which I'm looking at as a positive thing because that means if you're here for a TC, it's your last opportunity. You better bid well, because otherwise you're going home empty-handed. And mine is one of a baker's dozen of 450 <laughs> SLs um, crossing the block this morning. I think it's the only uh, 73, so maybe people will wait for the purity of that year. Um, we'll see. It's, I'm excited, I'm nervous. Yeah, we've all been here at auctions a lot of times, but never had any skin in the game. No, no. So this is it's a totally new experience. Um, you know, just having a vested interest in how the auctioneer is pushing the car and the enthusiasm of the crowd. So a little nervous in there. I think it's fun to finally put ourselves in the shoes of these people that we've seen. Yeah. And now I understand all the nervous pacing and general chit chat pro and con on the car before it all happens because you just want to keep pushing the process along and, and just get to the end of it. Yeah. And I'm ready to see what these things do. Yes, good luck. Yeah, good luck to you. Let's do this thing. Huh? All right. Tail. All right. Also, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. If I could ask for. Is that one yours? This one is not mine. Oh, please come up with the video. See them. But this is 74, so it's just a year, right year after. Come up with the video. Oh, look, they dropped it. They're doing it in three. Do you see what we're offering you here? That's the wrong way, Stefan. They had to go down to three. This is uh, not looking good for our hero. But again, the real money is waiting for Stefan's car. The smart money? The smart money in the red. Okay. I like that you said that, Brad. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yes. They roll the competitors to both of your cars up at the same time. All right. You could not plan that. No, no. So that was a pretty nice TC, right? Yeah. Five speed, 
yellow. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, not again. the luxury automatic, but it was nice. Fewer miles. No, no sale at 85. All right, now here's the Corvair convertible. What are the chances of this? So this is an automatic, very similar to mine, but automatic. 5,000. All right. All right. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right. Matt Lewis. The car. Here it is. Three speed automatic. It's got a great stage presence. It's a max. I got a thousand. I got a thousand. That is a Maserati. My Maserati. 1100. That's one way to phrase it. It's a Maserati. I can love it if it's all. Yep. Look at that car. Fourteen hundred. 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 Fourte
is even though you guys had a less than stellar experience with what you earned on the cars, you still got the butterflies. You're still talking about coming back to another auction. Absolutely. So there's a there's a junkie mentality to all of this too. You want in, you're gonna beat the house next time, yes. right? I am a glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. What I take away from this is that there's there's no hard and fast rule for doing well at an auction. No, and it has to do 100% with the crowd. Because Auctions America gave it their all. They did. For every car that went up there. We just didn't have the right people in the audience. That's it. And I think next time we buy cars at auction and sell them on Craigslist. Yes. That's sounds, how you make money. Sounds like a better way to do this. <laughs> Well, I am sorry for you gentlemen's losses. I'm happy for the win. And uh, drinks on Brad. Drinks on Brad. Yeah. <laughs>